All right, so in this video, we're going to go over how to switch themes. So we're going to be able to switch from a light to a dark theme. It's going to be super simple. I'm also going to give away a one year subscription to Rider, the ID that you see me use in the majority of my videos. All you got to do is comment something down below. Make sure you subscribe and I'll go ahead and announce the winner on my Discord. So let's get started. As always, we're going to go ahead and create a new project. So a new solution. I'm going to select desktop application. We're going to call this themes or whatever you want to call it, really. Make sure that it's a W pf application language being c sharp and the framework as long as it's you know above dotnet 5 you're fine let's go ahead and click create let's start by changing the actual view so i'm going to do this i'm going to change the orientation so we have the designer on the right hand side and the actual saml on the left hand side and as always the source code is available on my patreon down in the description right so unlike my other videos this isn't going to be any like mvvm stuff we're just going to focus on the design for today we're going to start by creating a resource dictionary this one's going to be called light theme and we're going to make this as simple as possible. So we're not going to change too many things. For this one, we're just going to set a solid color brush. We can self-close it. We'll give it a key by saying X colon key. And we'll call it background brush. Capitalized to be in the beginning as well. And we'll set the color to uh, white. Now we'll do the same thing, but this one's going to be called a foreground brush. So foreground brush. And this is going to be for like text and stuff like that. And we're going to make this, you know, the opposite. So we'll make it black. So with this, what this is saying is that whenever we have the light, theme activated any background like the background brush is going to be you know white and the foreground is going to be black so the text is going to be you know black on white and we'll go ahead and create another resource dictionary and this one's going to be for the dark theme so we can call it dark theme and we're essentially going to do the same thing here we're just going to do this but instead of the background brush you know the background the primary color if you will is going to be black we can actually change that to something else, but, you know, let's keep it black for now. Actually, you know what? Let's make it hashtag 15, 15, 15, which is, you know, the hash is to denote that it's a hex color, a hex value, excuse me. All right. And that's literally it for the actual theming. Now, all we got to do is we got to head into the app.saml within the application resources. We'll create a resource dictionary. We'll say resource dictionary dot merge dictionaries. And here we'll specify the two resource dictionaries that we just created. So we'll do resource dictionary we can self-close it and we can say source and we'll just select uh light theme actually we're gonna have dark theme at first but that's gonna be invoked by the saml c compiler in the beginning not important but just make sure that we put dark theme first followed by obviously light theme there we go now in order to showcase and actually you know try this out we're gonna just add like a quick little design here so instead of a grid we can make a stack panel uh the orientation should be vertical by default put a text block in here text and we'll say i don't know hello world world there we go put a little comma there as well do vertical alignment center horizontal alignment center that's gonna center it both vertically and horizontally and the font size speaks for itself font size is obviously going to be the size of the font i'm gonna put it at 40 yeah it looks about right now here's where we actually want to you know bind certain properties to uh different themes so let's go ahead and you know start with actual the the background of the actual uh, the the primary window being this one so we can do background and we're going to do binding however instead of binding to a static resource we want to bind to a dynamic resource so we'll do dynamic bind, oh actually dynamic resource so no binding just dynamic resource my bad and we'll do background brush so just as a quick note to why we're actually using dynamic resource rather than static resource it's because when utilizing static resource the value of the resource is determined during compile time this means that that at the point of parsing and loading SAML, the actual value of the resource is retrieved from the resource dictionary and assigned to the property. Now, the mechanism responsible for this operation is the static resource extension class, which isn't user invoked, but rather operates during compile time, replacing all instances of the static resource markup with the resolved values from the resource dictionary. Now, dynamic resource, on the other hand, operates with a different paradigm. Instead of resolving the resource value immediately, it creates an expression known as resource reference expression this expression contains information about the key used to locate the resource in the dictionary and the property it's assigned to now unlike static resource dynamic resource doesn't fetch the resource during parsing instead it waits until runtime when the resource is actually required so one of the notable advantages of dynamic resource is its ability to automatically update ui elements if the underlying resource changes 
And this is facilitated by storing an unevaluated expression, which offers the capability for on-the-fly retrieval of resources and subsequent property updates. Now, in contrast to static resource, however, dynamic resource offers more flexibility as it can be applied to read-only properties and ensure smoother adaptation to changes in resources without causing parser errors. Now, back to the design, let's go ahead and create that toggle, that iOS-looking toggle button that we saw in the beginning. We'll create a toggle button. We'll set the width to, I don't know, 60 and the height to height to 30. We are going to add some events to this, but for now, we'll leave it be. Change the toggle button dot template because we're going to style this a little bit. We'll enter its control template. We'll create a quick little border. We'll give it a name. We'll say X name switch border. We'll give it a width of uh, 58, which is slightly less than the width of the toggle button. And we'll give it the same height, so height 30, corner radius of uh, 50. I will set the background to white. I'll zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. Now in this border, we'll create another border. And this is going to act as the little circle within. And we'll give it a name. We'll say X name switch shape. Set a width to 22. Set a margin on the left and the right side. So we'll do 4004. That's, uh, yep. What's really cool about this ID as well is that when doing margins, for instance, it actually shows you the, the property we're, that we're assigning to. So if there's, you know, multiple properties, it will show you know l for left t for top r for right and b for bottom which is really good because now we know that we want to set it to the right and not the bottom so we'll do four zero so it's four zero four zero and the background of white we'll do horizontal alignment left and the corner radius 15. now it doesn't look all that impressive but let's go ahead and add a shadow to it so we can actually see it we'll do border dot effect and in here we'll do a drop shadow effect which we can self close we'll set the opacity to 0.2 and and uh, yeah, it's not looking 100%. It's looking a little bit wonky, but we can fix that. Add a height property, 22. And there we go. It's looking much better. Now, we still can't see the outside, so we'll fix that as well. But we're going to fix that with triggers. So underneath the, uh, the parent border, we're going to create some triggers. We can do so by typing control template dot triggers. And within the triggers, we're going to create two triggers. One for when it is checked and when, one for when it's not. So we'll do trigger. And this is not going to be self-closed because we are going to change some properties when the trigger actually invokes. We'll do based on the property and it's going to be toggle button dot check. Well, it's checked. The value is true. Then we're going to do this. We're going to do setter property. Actually, let's start with a target name because that's going to make more sense. We'll do switch shape. Remember that we created one called here. Switch shape. That's the one that we're targeting. And we're going to change the horizontal alignment to the value right. We can self-close that one. So this is saying whenever the toggle button is checked, we're actually going to move the uh, the switch shape so this little ball thing to the right and we're also going to give it a background we just need to change the background and then we need a nice green looking color we'll do hashtag 4 cd 964 ish yeah, it looks about right. And then we obviously need one more trigger, as mentioned previously. We can just copy paste this one. We can do false, meaning that whenever it's not toggled, all we're going to do is we're just going to change the um, background to a uh, some sort of gray. We'll do light gray, but not on the switch shape, <laughs> the switch border. There you go. Wow, look at that. Now it's looking so much better. Now, as good practice, you would essentially extract this into a different uh, file, a some sort of resource dictionary where you would keep the actual style and then add it within your app SAML. But for now, this is fine. Don't worry about it. Now, let's go ahead and add the final stretch, which is adding the actual events to this button. Again, you would do this with commands. But since we want to try to keep this as simple as possible, let's just go ahead and add two, uh, two event handlers to the toggle button. They're actually going to contain the same code, but we still need to invoke two different events. The first one being check. Let's create a method. We're going to name this uh, on toggle button check. Let's make sure we spell that correctly there we go and it should have yep it refactored that here as well and um, we don't need to implement anything for it what we do now is we do unchecked as well and that's going to contain the uh, exact same event handler so they're both going to be pointing towards the same one clean that up a little bit perfect now all we need to do is like five lines of code this is super simple we're going to create a private field be private bool is like 
theme equals false. So whenever this event handler is invoked, what we want to do essentially is we want to, first of all, inverse the is light theme field. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do is, is light theme equals and the inverse, which is is light theme, but with an exclamation mark. We can zoom in a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a string. It's going to be called new theme path equals. And we're going to do a ternary operator here. So we're going to do is light theme. Uh, if it's true, then we want to return the light theme XML or SAML, sorry. Otherwise, we want to return the dark theme dot SAML. Now we're going to go ahead and load the component. We'll do resource dictionary. We'll call it new theme equals application dot load component. We can actually go ahead and cast this as a resource dictionary. Uh, da, da, da. Because load component returns what? It just returns an object. So let's go ahead and, you know, make sure that we cast it. We're going to say new URI. I'm going to do new theme path comma uri kind and it's going to be relative make this var so we can actually put on the same line it looks a little bit better there we go now we'll do application dot current dot resources dot merge dictionaries and we want to remove at the first index and we want to go ahead and add the new theme so we'll do remove at and then we'll do add and new theme and that's literally it however we do want to set this to true though because we want it to start off on the light theme i did totally forget to change the uh, foreground on the, uh, the actual you know text block as well so let's go ahead and do uh, foreground and we'll do dynamic resource and it's going to be foreground brush all right and if we take a look at it there we go it works Heck yeah. Now, if you want the chance to win a one year subscription to this ID that I'm using right here, then make sure to just comment down below, make sure you're subscribed and that's all. And again, the source code for this project will be available on my Patreon along with my other projects. So make sure to check that out if you want to. All right. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.